Tick tock, time to rock. We're here to rock with the hawk and the hickma. The hawk and the hickma. That should be our nicknames. That should be our nicknames, the hawk and the hickma. Yeah, yeah. Would you rather be the hawk, <laughs> the hawk or the hickma? Uh, I would be the, I would like to be the hawk. You can be the hickma. Hawk and the hickma, baby. <laughs> yeah. The, the, the hawk and the hickma. <laughs> Wow. Wow. All these other guys don't have the hawk and the hickma. Where's the hickma? Where Where's is the hickma? the hickma? Speaking of the uh speaking of uh of the hickma, yeah. Uh so ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be uh our 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 target is to get to this Sajid Lipham video where <laughs> it's funny because he can't even say anything directly. Have you noticed that? Like he Yeah, yeah. He's trying not to call people I mean, to be fair, he he has called these guys out a million times and so on, but it's getting to the point where it's like he doesn't want to say exactly what he's talking about because then all their fans, oh, how dare you attack this guy for promoting child marriage and how how dare you how dare you attack this these other guys for promoting secret second wives and he doesn't want to call them out directly because then all their fans um, come after him. But yeah, uh, yeah. So, he's he's putting on this whole thing, this whole reasonable guy, and uh, you know, people are doing a lot of crazy things, and I'm reasonable, and I want to just you know say the good stuff that needs to be said without directly attacking anybody. He puts on that that whole uh, persona and then preaches to to his audience. Yeah. So, AP. I mean, apart from apart from the infamous holes in the narrative interview. What was that like two years ago or something like that? Two and a half years ago, something like that? I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Apart from the infamous holes in the narrative interview, this has got to be the worst month for Dawa. <laughs> I know. So Ever. much stuff happens, right? <laughs> Ever. It's all back to back. Man. So what do we have? We have so many things that happened. So we have the whole child marriage thing from of Daniel Kikichu with his crazy things about having sex with a five-year-old or four-year-old or three-year-old girl. Uh, then we have, I don't know, Muhammad Hijab and Ali Dawa talking about secret wives, uh, the infighting again. I don't yeah, know. this is a, these are rough <laughs> times, man. Rough times to be a, a Dai. Oh, yeah. And the, the, uh, Dawa's the, uh, is amazing. the, uh, <laughs> the, 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 the crying, the crying shakes. <laughs> the crying shakes weeping over people writing writing Muhammad's name on their private parts and so on. <laughs> like these guys openly sobbing and crying uh over everything that's going and call it calling for the 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 massacre of entire city populations to to stop yeah. to stop the blasphemy against Muhammad the, the epidemic surge of people writing Muhammad's name and writing the shahada on their uh penises and breasts and who i don't know what they're these these guys are the experts <laughs> we should burn entire cities down to stop people from writing the name of the prophet muhammad on their private parts wow man <laughs> so these are these are rough times man and and it's Terrible rough times it's funny because they started off the year thinking they had a slam dunk with like andrew tate and so on oh we got andrew tate and He's our hero. Things now we're get now things are going to turn around because <laughs> we got Andrew Tate, the webcam yeah. pimp. He's praising us. Oh, and don't forget Sneeko now. Now they've got Sneeko. So there's like the oh boy. Yeah. It's like if you named if you named the people at the absolute bottom of the barrel, the last people on earth we would want representing our position. It would be like wh whether you're Christian or atheist or whatever. The last people on earth you would want to be the champions of your position would probably be. Andrew Tate and Sneeko. <laughs> yeah, lots of people may not know who Sneeko is, but he's a, he's a streamer. He's a streamer. Uh, I only also became aware of him because of the whole um, Islam drama. He initially said something offensive about Islam and Muslims became outraged and started like insulting and threatening him and unsubscribing and things like that. And then he had an interaction with the Muslims and was like, no, I didn't mean to be offensive. You know, I take that back and all that. And then, and then later after Andrew Tate converted to Islam, he suddenly became interested in Islam and now he converted to Islam. But the issue is the guy is just, uh, he is very, very embarrassingly 
cringeworthy and not very smart. He's not known for being smart. He's known for his sensationalist, uh, stupid, funny attitude. And he recently became a neo-Nazi as well and started, uh, you know, befriending the neo-Nazis like Nick Fuentes and others and uh, making up theories about how the Jews are in control of all the stuff that is going oh, on. Oh, that's, right that's why that's why he went to Islam. <laughs> Yeah, and then and then that of course combines very well with Islam. Of course, Muslims like his stuff immediately once he starts bashing Jews and once he starts bashing every single problem in the world, uh, blaming every single one uh, problem in the world on Jews. And he came closer to Islam, and eventually he said, "I am now a Muslim." There is also one funny thing to add, though. He was recently um, on a stream together with Destiny who we also recently became familiar with because of his cartoons about, <laughs> about Islam. Uh, Sneeko brought up something about Islam, and Destiny said, Sneeko, I want to ask you one thing. What is your favorite? Can you tell me one favorite verse of yours from the Quran? And he was like, yeah. I said, okay, go ahead. And Sneeko is quiet and goes, no. <laughs> And, and, and that's the moment. He has no idea. He, he doesn't even know a single thing about the Quran. But he's there uh, talking about how the Quran is amazing and all that. It's just, I don't know. It's crazy. Hey, hey check out the comments here from our friend Nawaf. Yo, oh, how is that is, a Muslim? Yeah. No, 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 how is Reed and uh, is Reed enjoying his 15th birthday? Uh, so, of course, he knows my son just died. And this yeah. is the response we get. And uh, notice how this is interesting because... Uh, these are the same guys who whine and moan and wail when people write Muhammad's name on their private parts, right? Like they, this is how guys act. And then they, they get shocked. They get shocked when someone does something. See? Here. This is, I, I credit Nawaf for this action here. Nawaf, well done. Wonderful. This is what you get. This is what you yep. get. So welcome to and this is actually this is actually a good summary of the situation in Dawa. It's like 14 centuries of violence. Then it gets stopped. Then it finally gets stopped. And then it's uh, we'll we'll insult everyone into being quiet. We'll insult everyone into being quiet about uh, about Muhammad. And they just don't get it. Um, so we are going to our goal is to get to. Our goal is to get to Sajid's video, but I did want to recap some of the recent events because Sajid is responding. Sajid is reacting to all of the embarrassing stuff that's been going on for the past month, and he wants to do something about it. And just he, he, I, I really think there's nothing he can do about it. I think I think he's actually stuck. So where should we actually begin here? Uh, how? How about the Daniel and IP clip? Oh, boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, All right. So, good. ladies and gentlemen, there's an entire debate. There's an entire debate. You definitely want to watch it. But there's this clip of inspiring philosophy asking Daniel specifically about, you know, how, how young can a girl be? And Daniel's responding. So let's go ahead and check this out. Because if you can start uh, fertilizing a female as soon as she becomes, as soon as she's showing signs of an imminent um, fertility, the period, menarche, then that will maximize because you've secured the female right at the beginning, the start of when she will potentially. But you can still have sex before you start maximizing fertility, right? When the body is physically okay. mature, according to Islamic law. Do you know law. what precocious puberty is? Yes, I do. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what precocious puberty is? Huh. Do I? <laughs> <laughs> he, he, goes, he goes, yes, I do. <laughs> I know he's, I know this anime. He's like, oh, yes, I do. Like, he's very proud of it. Yeah. Precocious puberty is my <laughs> life. <laughs> what's, what's wrong with these dudes, man? <laughs> I, I find the language here already very disturbing. I don't know. He starts with, th this is the way he always talks about, about girls and women. It's like, fertilizing the female securing the female this is just the whole thing the, the whole time he, he doesn't even talk about them as you know as as women there is no such such value of um actually you know a, a a human equal human interaction of course there is no equality in his eyes i know but i don't know it's it's, it's kind of disturbing and he 
that's all his thing is always about the females as soon as they are ready should be secured by the men uh, so that they can be uh, made ready uh, to fertilize and increase the population and make sure that Muslims uh, become strong and, you know, large and all that. Wow. So um, they're doing the uh, whole precocious puberty, maximizing fertility discussion here. Let's see where Daniel's going to gonna go. It means going, starting puberty uh, unusually early, like Can beyond you have, averages. Is there anything in Islam that prevents you from, in a man, marrying a five-year-old that started precocious puberty? No, marriage can happen, uh, like you can arrange a marriage even as an infant, but that doesn't mean that sex is allowed. But could, could, a, uh, could a man have a marriage to a five-year-old consummated if she started precocious puberty? If she starts showing signs of physical maturity, then yes, that's permissible, as I stated. That's what about the age four? If there are signs Three. of, so this is something that becomes biologically impossible because precocious I puberty, have a there are shows no. It goes as early as eleven months. All right. Well, that's something that the parents would not uh, the, see. The thing about Islamic marriage is that parents are involved at these ages, and when you look at the marriage of the Prophet, peace be upon him, to Aisha, uh, her parents were involved, and so she was not living with the Prophet, peace be upon him, even though she was married to him. So the parents have oversight, and sometimes a qadi or a judge can have oversight if the guardians are not capable to make sure that the rights and the physical well-being of a child are not, or a minor are not harmed by that marriage. What, what about, because you've tried to justify uh, sexual slavery after a war. So what if a man finds a, a seven-year-old, let's say, started her period, could he take her back as a sex slave? So that's a whole different debate on um, slavery and concubinage. I'm just talking about the minor aspect. Would that be fine? Yeah. So that if a girl is uh, any age, she can be taken as a sex a slave. slave, right? Yeah, as opposed to being left to die. All right. So, <clears throat> wow. It's I, I watched this live, and this part was was definitely my favorite part of the whole debate, and I thought I thought IP did what. I, don't, I, I can't think of anybody else who could do this so so effectively. He prepared these questions and really pressed him and made him say things that are that really expose Islam and Daniel Kikichu. It, I felt so satisfied as I was watching that. I thought, "Thank you, man." Yeah, I was um, I was a, I was in front of Daniel, sort of off to the off to the side against a, a wall. But I was I was working on I was still working on my like opening statement and stuff like that because I was debating next, and I was like. So I wasn't I wasn't listening to everything, but for that part I was like, "What? Wait, wait what?" <laughs> he just said that. <laughs> he just said you. He just said, "Okay, for a five year old. Okay, for a four year old." And then, and then when it's okay, what if she's eleven months? And it's oh, you know, the parents have to step in there and and they decide. And of course, if the parents have been groomed by a professional manipulator like Muhammad, then they'll hand their kid over because oh, it. it, it you, you you see, my child has reached puberty at the age of 11 months. This is a sign from Allah that I need to hand over this man. Otherwise, my precocious child might go go into the closet and and masturbate. So I'll just ha I'll just hand my 11 month old girl to uh to this uh, creepy dude. You, you you remember you remember Fareed? What was Fareed's tweet about that? Oh, um, his tweet. I recently just posted that again. It was, um, how is it child rape when there is parental consent? Yeah. So people, people are asking, people are pointing out since a minor is not capable of consenting, really, a minor doesn't know what she's getting into and yet they'll marry off a minor and so on. And so people are pointing out that this is, this is actually, it, this is actually rape. If someone isn't capable of consenting, it's a different kind. It's, you know, it's not, it, it, it's, it's more like some for, like statutory rape or something like that. But the idea is that someone's not capable of, of consenting. And then his response is, how can it be rape if the parents are consenting? So as long as the parents consented to sex with a, an 11 month old or a five year old or whatever, then it's it doesn't matter if the little girl has no clue what's going on it, it doesn't count as rape because the parents have consented so they have this they have yeah. this mindset they have this mindset built in
It's so funny, like uh, the way he presents it, the way even he responds, it initially sounds like he's um, saying that the parents would not, uh, you know, would not allow it anyway, and they would prevent it because they are supposed to prevent it, they are supposed to not allow it. But I mean, just the fact that there is no uh, barrier here, it is not forbidden, and it is up to the parents already, if you th if you think just one step further without taking his uh, his, his idiotic deflection, um, you know, at, at face value, it, it already implies that uh, the parents, if they are terrible people, can allow it at any age, at any, any age. And if they can prove that there is that there is a sign of development, they can allow it at 11 months or, you know, three years in, in that example. And the man, an old man, can actually come and take a three-year-old child as his wife and have sex with her, which is just, wow, man. And he's clearly he's clearly trying to think of something in Islam that would prevent this, right? He's trying to, like, what can I say here that would make it not sound like I'm saying it's okay to have sex with a, with a you know an 11 month old? And so it's ah, but the parents are involved, so you know the parents might not agree to that. Okay, but you're allowing the parents to agree to that, right? Yeah. There's there's not there's nothing in Islam that would prevent any of that, right? Um, so pretty, pretty interesting stuff. All right. So we've got that. And then, so, all right, AP, we're giving, we're, we're, we're presenting this from our perspective. Now think of this from the perspective of Muslims like Sajid Lipham, who's, <laughs> he's trying to do dawah. He's trying, he's trying to, he's trying his hardest to do dawah and to tell people about Tawheed and the oneness of Allah and, He's making his videos and they're, his videos are doing okay. But then Daniel Hakikachu comes along and goes, oh, we marry kids. Oh, we so strong. We child marriage. Ha ha. And, and, and like, like, like Muslims around the world begin praising him. Oh, our hero, our hero, the, our hero, our defender of child marriage has arrived. And it's like, oh my goodness. Yeah, and and, and Sajdas just thinks, oh no, what are what is this idiot doing? Now I have to go up there and have to say some nice words to make people have a have a good idea about Islam again. And he actually says it in his video. He's like he he's appealing to non-Muslims and begging the non-Muslims who are just getting in touch with Islam to ignore all the uh, the, the debates that are happening. He's, he's specifically, I mean, he's definitely it's very clear he's reacting to Daniel Hikikichu without dropping his name. But mm -hmm. he's begging the non-Muslims to ignore him and the debates and pay attention to all the nice things in Islam. And Islam is a beautiful religion and all that. <laughs> yeah, he's definitely he's definitely uh, you, you, you can tell from what he says that he's at least reacting to the Daniel Hakikachu uh, defense of child marriage and yep. presenting Islam as the, the go to religion of uh, pedophiles everywhere yep. and and to the. Uh, to the recent secret second wives discussion with Ali Dawa and Muhammad Hijab. So let's go ahead and check out a clip. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, there is a much longer video on Ali Dawa's channel. Uh, definitely worth watching if you've got the time. Over an hour long. I'm just going to play the uh, little beginning clip where they give the little preview. So this is uh, from the beginning of Ali if Dawa. They put me, Hijab, Brother Sataj, the wood on lie detector test. And they said the following questions. Would you love your wife? Yes, pass. Would you die for her? Yes, pass. If your wife was okay, would you get a second wife? Yes, pass. There is not an... If our wives were okay with us getting a second wife, then we's gonna get one, and we proud of that. <laughs> you know, he's just dying to say that. Yeah, yeah. In an, in, in an Islamic, I wanted to say in an Islamic state, we do this, but they, they don't even have to. There are all kinds. Yeah. Of, I, don't, I don't know what these guys are doing, but there are all kinds of Muslims who get second, third, fourth wives in the West. You can't do it officially before the government, but you get your 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 wife before the government and then you get Islamic marriages. Uh, you get your Islamic marriages um, with your additional wives and that's how you do it and I, i've actually seen it pointed out years ago that it is far 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 easier for muslims in western countries to have four wives than it is in muslim countries because in muslim countries you have to be making enough money to you know have these marriages with all of these yeah. women in western nations your second third and fourth wife are all as far as the government is concerned they're all single mothers 
And since they're all single mothers, they're, they, you can get government assistance, government benefits. The government can actually pay for your extra wives. Um, and so they're pointing out it's, it's, like, it's, like a, it, it's like part of the call to move to the West in Muslim countries. Hey, if you can just get to a Western nation, you can actually marry two or three or four women. And you just have to take care of the first one. The others will be taken care of by the government. And you can just you can have all these wives. And, that makes uh, sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I actually knew a um, I actually knew a man who was quite old who did um, who did have two wives and one of them was his official wife. One of them was uh, his unofficial wife, and he actually did that very thing. He um, when he when he married his official wife, he didn't tell her that he already had an unofficial wife through an Islamic marriage. And she found that out later after the marriage. And she said, I would have never accepted it if I, if I knew it beforehand, but later I just came, uh, came, you know, became used to it is what she said. She was, a, um, th those were family friends, but people do that. And that guy was in Germany you know, at, at that time. He, people do that in the West. Yeah. I, I knew, a, uh, I knew a Muslim in Michigan who had multiple wives and, uh, fortunately his, I mean, it was amazing. We're actually talking to his the 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 woman who was going to become his second wife. Her parents asked us to talk to both of them, right? Uh, so this was this was me and Sam Shamoon back in the day. We're we're sitting there with the man and the woman. He, he's going through all of his arguments for Islam that he was using to convince her to convert to Islam so that she could come on as his second wife, and. Uh, we, of course, well, I mean, we, we completely ripped the arguments to shreds, but she still thought it was a good idea. So I went ahead and married him anyway. And then we it was it was several years later when I got a message from her mom saying, uh, yeah, she finally left Islam and she she took her kid. She took her kid nice. with her. Um, so, yeah, right. they, they, they do catch on. But I've heard that story over and over and over again about women who are brought in. Uh, they convert, become the, 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 the second wife or the secret second wife, and then eventually find their way out of Islam. But um and what's funny is um, the, the governments are also trying to uh, a little bit crack down on this and trying to, you know, uh, through regulations, through checks, uh, make sure that there is nothing fishy going on uh, and, and that, they, that these people are not um, exploiting certain, uh, you know, welfare rights that are given to them by the state. And that is then perceived by the Muslims who engage in polygamy as, you know, persecution. You know, these, <laughs> these, 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 these Kufar nations are, uh, you know, uh, persecuting us because we are Muslims and they don't like the way we are, we live and stuff like that. It's, yeah. All right. The let's get a, part. let's get a little more conflict a... between a man loving his wife and a man wanting to be polygamous. I agree. You, look, I get the polygamous part. I get the whole wanting to have more intimacy with more than one woman. Yeah, that's, but if that's, you can that's, ask that's the question the um, uh, more accurately, okay. that take on another wife and all the responsibilities yeah. that come with another wife, Good. how many men will agree to that? For example, if one says, oh, I sense that you've got a second wife, can he, says, can he say, no, I don't? Yes, you can. You can do that. You can say that. Yes, I, I personally <laughs> believe this what? is... If we sit down and we talk about it, um, so that was Ali Dawa asking Muhammad Hijab if it's a, yeah, and they, they go into a little more detail, but he asked him, can you, can a man just lie to his wife? And yes, that's allowed in the Hadith. And Muhammad was like that with his wives, uh, yeah. as it was clear, he was trying to, uh, deceive his wives about, um, marry the copt. And then of course he swore an oath saying that he would stop having sex with his slave girl and then broke that oath. And so this is the guy who says it's okay to lie to your wives in order to make them happy. And mm -hmm. so, okay, if you know it's gonna, if you know it's gonna upset your wife to have a second, third, or fourth wife, just lie to them. You're you're lying to make them happy so that they think they're the only they're the only ones for you. That makes sense, yeah. Makes makes sense. Totally. Yep. <clears throat> so that is uh, a. Uh, right. And I take my selfish needs out of it, i.e. Mm -hmm. me wanting him all to myself. I need to understand. Yeah, stop being greedy. That. So I need to sit down and I need to really think about how this is going to affect Stop him. being selfish. If yeah. Him yeah, think about how this affects him. You wanting him to be monogamous and not have four wives and, and an unlimited number of sex slaves. Think about how this Poor affects guy, him. Man. Yeah. Poor guy. Poor guy. What's he going to do? Oh, yeah. man. You see, you see how these girls are, man? They're, they're terrible. 
Terrible. See, they this what this game. way you got to get them when they're five, so that they don't, so that they're not <laughs> able, so that they're not able to form these thoughts on their own. And this is why you have to keep them a, a, away from any sort of education, uh, like they do in Afghanistan now. Uh, yeah, yeah. To, which, to which yeah, because my mm-hmm. wife was, she always gave me the um, sort of the feeling that I could be open with her. I told her mm. at one point that, look, babe, that's the sister. Is that I'm, you? Yeah. I'm possibly <laughs> what it, Look, the guys are loving it, right? He, this guy's talking about, hey, I, you know, you know, I, I felt comfortable around my wife. I felt comfortable enough bringing it up. And hey, you know, there's this, there's this other woman I, I want to marry. And the guys are, yeah, yeah, woohoo, yeah, yeah. tell her, uh, yeah, don't let her give you no lip. You know, it's, it's so pathetic. Uh, when you when you search online, when you search on YouTube just for uh, second wife or Muslim's second wife or something like that, you you will find a bunch of videos, including from Ali Dawa, from uh, other Muslim apologists, from known ones that say stuff like uh, why we should be having uh, more wives, why men should be allowed, and you just see these bunch of men saying, you know, complaining about how they're not allowed to do it or how uh, the women do not understand them. And it, it's just I, mean, I saw that early and I thought this looks so pathetic. It looks so, so pathetic. It looks like a bunch of uh, big babies, a bunch of big kids who are, you know, crying because they want the new PlayStation and they are complaining because they because their parents are not getting getting them a new. Yeah, they're like they're like little kids, like throwing <laughs> themselves on the on the on the floor in the checkout aisle of Walmart because mom wouldn't yeah. buy them any Skittles. I want my Skittles! <laughs> I want my Skittles. Get up off the floor. No, I want my second wife. I want my my second wife. Ah! (laughs) Precisely. Precisely. It's so pathetic. Uh, Tough guys. Tough bros. ES1002 said they may have just made four ex-Muslim women. Yeah, it it won't it won't happen instantly. But yeah, I'm sure uh, I'm sure a lot of these women, especially the young women who are watching, are going to be thinking, whoa. You know, I've heard, I've heard from people, I've heard from critics of Islam that, that this is a thing, but now we've got the champions of Dawah openly proclaiming it and, and sort of demanding it. The funny thing is that also the message of this whole show that they are doing here, um, I mean, he, Ali Dawah is advertising, this is his own show, he is advertising this as um, countering the current Western trends and uh, trying to preserve the nuclear family and islamic family and bringing back islamic values so this this whole thing here is meant to normalize all of these things that they are talking about and to introduce them to uh you know brainwashed misled muslims who are under western influence and also to openly and plainly say these things to others i think they're doing a very great job there and and exposing more and more people to how how messed up this is because people i don't i don't i think um if we let them talk about these things openly, I think more people will dislike Islam than be like, oh, this makes sense. I'm going to join them and participate in their amazing new lifestyle. So, <laughs> yeah. And, and it, it, it's really a combination of factors, which is, you know, making them like this. And this is true for, for Ali Dawa and Hijab, as well as, um, as well as, uh, Daniel Hakikachu, uh, Sheikh Uthman, they're all in the same camp. Namely that as as you get a number of followers who cheer you no matter what you do. Mm-hmm. Like you can you can you can lie to people. Your followers don't care as long as you're lying for the good of Islam. Uh you can say horrible things. You can make things up no they the followers just do not care. Once you've once you as the as the da'i, so once you as Muhammad Hijab or Ali Dawa or, or Hakikachu or Sheikh Uthman, once you've absorbed that and you've been conditioned to finally realize, wait a minute, I can say whatever I want. These guys are going to cheer me on. You, it just starts freeing you up to, you know, now just anything that pops into your head, you, oh, this is a great idea because they're going to cheer for cheer for it anyway. So, oh, you know, I think it'd be a great idea to defend child marriage. And what, what do your followers do? They cheer for you. Oh, I think it's, I think it's great to uh, tell women that we want to have s- secret second wives and so on. Well, guess what? Your, your followers are a bunch of, uh, a bunch of horny young men 
Um, and so, of course, they're going to cheer for you. Uh, Sheikh Uthman, oh, ah, 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 I got stabbed. I got stabbed by the infidels. Where are David Wood and the apostate prophet who, who led, they, their, their criticisms led to this catch up on me, right? It's, uh, <laughs> um, and, and notice, notice to this day, I mean, he's been completely exposed as a, as a total fraud. I mean, this is the, this is the Jussie Smollett of Islam. Find find one of his followers who cares even slightly. They do not care as long as you are do as long as you are doing that for Islam for your work. You're 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 golden with us, and so they they absorb this idea, and then they end up they end up doing stuff like this. And you combine that with um, with uh, their idea that's built into a lot of these guys that. Part of the problem in Islam is that it's becoming watered down. So we want to go like hardcore. We want to go hardcore defending the teachings of Islam in order for, for us to get Allah's blessing on our work. And you combine all that with the recent influence of Andrew Tate and Andrew Tate sort of shocking everyone by 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 showing them, no, you can just go in and treat women like garbage. Even in, even Western women, you could just treat them like like they're stupid idiots and they're pure garbage and they exist for no other reason than to bring you pleasure and money. You can tell them that to their faces, and there are those who will accept it. And so these guys have absorbed that idea. And now that it's just rolling, it's just it, it's 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 rolled up into a ball right now, and we're getting this stuff. And this is uh, this is fun stuff. Brilliant, brilliant stuff. Alhamdulillah. Let's go and see a little more. Second wife. If my husband has gone behind my back, that to me is cheating. Okay. Even if okay. it is Fine. islamically Fine. correct. Feminist sisters who love their sisters, who will die for their sisters, will take a bullet for their sisters, but will not share their husbands for their sisters. So the point is this, you know, let me be real, yeah? If you love your, if you've got a good husband, by the way, I'm not talking about these guys who don't pray, Jahil, clowns, mm. yeah? Who don't pray, who oppress their Idiots. wives. A good man who practices, who fears Allah, who's good to his wife, takes care of his wife. He comes and he says, I want a second wife. All hell breaks loose. And then we blame this man. Yeah, but why are you keeping it secret? What else should he do? Poor what guy. Else he do? <clears throat> yeah, poor okay. guy. So, <clears throat> so. What, what, what an argument. Imagine because you could turn the same. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. I'm... No, you're totally correct. You, 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 could, you could say the same thing about any guy. Like, oh, um, you don't do everything your husband wants. And therefore, why are you going to be upset if he goes and cheats on you? You could say that. You could say that about anything. Why are you going to blame him? I mean, you could turn this around and say, uh, and say, uh, Muslim brothers are saying that they, they love their brothers and they would do everything for their brothers, but they will not share their their wives with their with their brothers. You could turn the same thing around and, and just use that. Why is mm -hmm. that any, uh, any any weaker here? This is such a dumb argument. <laughs> yeah. Uh, did did y'all did y'all catch that? Re repeat that again because that's important. You could turn the same thing around and say. Uh, he says, Muslim sisters say, uh, we love our sisters, we would do this and do, do that for our sisters, but we would never share their, share our husbands with our sisters. But you could turn this around and you could also say, Muslim brothers, men say we love our brothers, we would do everything for our brothers, but we would not share our wives with our brothers. Why? So you could apply the same logic here. Why not? Mm -hmm. Um, <clears throat> Zadok said, uh, why is there variance of coverings in Islam from the Shaila to the Burqa? What, what determines what covering is the most acceptable? Uh, well, you, you, you have, um, so in the Quran, you have some very, they're, ve they're not very clear verses. It's like covering up your ornaments and so on. But notice that's not clear on exactly how, how, to what extent you have to, uh, cover up. And so you have to go to other Muslim sources and there are Muslims who disagree on sources. And so it, it'll come down to what their scholars are saying and the, the different schools of thought. And it comes down to cultural issues. And so it, it's, it's a situation that you find over and over and over again in the Muslim sources where the perfectly clear Quran is just really, really unclear on exactly what it's saying. And so you end up with a with a a, a pretty broad spectrum of practices that, that flow out of it. Yeah, that pretty much summarizes it. <clears throat> um, all right, so was there more? Oh, no, we got about another minute to of this. See how Allah is testing her to see how she responds. Mm, yeah. that's, you know, if she decides to do the opposite, which is, you know, um, you know, throw the divorce card or throw this card, then yeah, ultimately yeah. she's falling into the act of disobedience. Thank as you. Opposed Thank to you. Which did you catch that? And it, like, it's already happening. Notice all these, all these, um, all these women, all these young women were horrified at the idea of 
their husbands getting a second wife. None of them wanted it. And yet you just mm -hmm. saw her, how, how quickly she can be conditioned to say, okay, if I have a problem with sharing my husband and me, you know, uh, me wanting him all for myself, you know, I'm going to have to answer for Allah. I'm going to have to answer to Allah. And maybe Allah is testing me by how faithful I am to him. And well, what's the test? Like Allah is testing me to see if I'm going to get divorced over this or if I'm actually going to stop being selfish and let my husband um, let my husband uh, marry as many women as he wants and so on. That is actually a very um, a very popular explanation in uh, Muslim society and Muslim cultures, where women adopt this way of thinking because that's what they are told by their by their imams and by the, uh, by their scholars as well. So this is very very common. Uh, Muslim women will often say this to each other. Uh, one of them says, "I would never accept this. How can I accept something like that? Can you?" And they then say, "Well, you know, this is how Allah tests our patience. And uh, as as good women, as good Muslim women who have faith in Allah and who do things for Allah, we should be accepting this and thereby show that we are good believers. And that that's just, I mean, that's where the whole where their the the cult like mentality comes out, where you can clearly see that the women don't like this." But they are told that this is um, this is actually good. So they they turn this around, and this this miserable thing, which we all clearly hate, is actually good, and we just don't like it because this is a test. What we really need to do is to do whatever the the, the husbands want. This is cult behavior. Yeah, and and everyone who's horrified at this never never ignore the fact of how easy, how absolutely easy it is to condition people to accept this. Yeah. I mean, you'd think, oh, no, women will never go. Well, women will never go for this. Wrong. Wrong. Uh, you can condition men very easily. You can condition women very easily. If you are in a context of uh, you're a Muslim, again, you could condition people, whether they're male or female. But in this context, uh, you're a Muslim woman. You're a Muslim woman. Do you want to be a good Muslim woman or a bad Muslim woman? You obviously want to be a good Muslim woman. And these guys will start bombarding you with the idea of what is a good Muslim woman. And a good Muslim woman they're going to define as one who's totally uh, fine with her husband boning a bunch of other, uh, bunch of other women because that makes her not selfish. Say you don't want to be selfish, wife. You don't want to hold him back and and uh, and thwart his desires and so on. So they can they can condition people really quickly like that. Hey, hey, why is inspiring philosophy over here in the chat when he could just call, he, yeah, he could just call in and join us, dude. You could just call in and join us. What the heck's wrong with you? Yeah. Um, so, but he you? said uh, he says I just realized the Muslim men in this interview never asked the women if they would like to be a second secret wife. Does any woman <laughs> aspire to be a second secret wife? What women are these men going to convince to do this? You can condition them too. You can condition them too. And it's kind of a, it's kind of an honor, right? Like, oh, you had you your can wife. Find three year old ones. Maybe. Yeah, but like, I mean, think about it from a from the perspective of, uh, of a woman. I mean, it's like it's like it, it, for for people who've always wondered. Like, like groupies who follow around like sports players or something like that. And they just want to be able to say that they had sex with, you know, some famous uh, ball player or something like that. You think, oh, what, what, what's in it for these women? Well, they were chosen, right? Like this guy, this famous athlete could have picked anyone and he picked you. And so I guess that means you're, uh, you're really hot or something like that. But I mean, think about this. If, if, a, if a guy wants you as his second, well, he's already married. Now he wants you. I mean, I guess that that would be appealing to uh, certain women, especially if they've been conditioned to to think this way. And guess what? The Dais, they're on this. They're 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 working on their uh, they're they're working on conditioning their their second, third, fourth wives, and so on. Here's the thing. I mean, imagine this the scenario. Just uh, just make up the uh, a hypothetical to understand how that could go and feel. Um, the man sits down as a religious Muslim man and callously uh, breaks the news to his uh, wife and says, hey, I want another wife and I have also I have already laid my eyes on one. Uh, I want to marry that one. Or he says, hey, I already have a second wife, which you don't know about. And this is this is fine. I finally want to tell you about this. Now, if she uh, becomes emotional and says, how dare you? I will not accept this. Uh, the man responds with, are you saying you go against what Allah and Muhammad have ordained? 
Are you saying you disagree with the with with Allah and His Messenger? Are, are you, you saying you are you, you, are you, are you going against the Quran? Are you sure you're even a Muslim anymore? Yeah, yeah you're yeah. acting. You're acting like a Westerner. Yeah, you're acting Imagine. like you're acting like a non-Muslim feminist Westerner, whatever you whatever you are. And then she also, the woman also has to compete with a with a little child, you know, like she's getting old. She's already uh, used in her tw in her uh, mid twenties, and now she has to uh, compete with a with a five year old second wife. And that's that's mm -hmm. a <laughs> yeah. We already we we saw we have the records. We know how all of that worked out uh, for Muhammad's <sighs> wives as uh, yeah. as he's tr as he's uh, trading as he's uh, bringing in younger, hotter wives. Uh, this is so yeah. messed up, man. This is really, really <laughs> messed up. This is this is just a this is just a religion of uh, hey, what is what a what do the men who are coming up with this religion want? Oh, let's build an entire religion around that. All right, let's. Uh, yeah. Now it's best as a Muslim man to follow. It's not the religion of Al Islam. It's the religion of women's feelings. I'm not going to follow that religion. With respect to you, I'm not going to do uh, prostration to the collective hormonal and emotional status of men or women or children or anybody else. You're saying if he's man in. I'm not going to bow down to a woman. I'll just bow down to a big pagan cube. Yeah, and I'll and worship okay. Muhammad. Yeah, now if you give me a black stone, oh, I'll kiss that thing all day long, but not you. <laughs> <laughs> that's my that's my real first wife, the black stone. <laughs> if your husband came to you man enough and said to you he wants a second man wife, enough. at least then it's not. Notice how they're always couching everything in, ah, man enough, so. Uh, it's, notice if, if he's man enough to just come to you and say, I'm, I'm getting my second wife. Let's see where he goes with it. Secret. Sister, I knew one about second, one second, it. One second, one second, one second. Do you know about it? Are you going to, what are you going to do? Are you going to say to me, yeah, you can? Thank you. Your face is no. <laughs> If he knows that she would withhold the kids from him, use the state, then do it without her knowledge. But I believe that's a form of abuse. You said, bro, and I'll call them cowards, who would rather make their wife happy at the displeasure of Allah. Yeah? A coward, the biggest Terrible. coward ever. Coward. That would go and commit zina. Adultery mm -hmm. at the cost of my wife. You are the biggest simp ever with a capital S. Terrible, terrible people. They would rather make their wife, uh, keep their wife happy instead of keeping Allah happy and doing what Allah says. Horrible, horrible people. Good stuff. Good stuff. So this is this is what's going on, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, these guys have been putting out this kind of content. And then, you know, the. the this is this is just the latest, but this has been going on for years. And this has been going on for years. And you're getting all these people leaving Islam. You're getting this avalanche, this avalanche of apostasy. Not that's we didn't come up with the we didn't come up with the avalanche of apostasy. That's what Muslim scholars are calling it. It's the it, they're in this interesting situation where when they're talking to us, they thump their chest. Oh, Islam is taking over the world. And then when they're talking to each other behind the scenes, what are we going to do about all the apostates? Everyone's the leaving The child going to become an apostate. <laughs> yeah, so let's just let's just recap. <laughs> let's just, this is this is the video Hatoon made, but uh, we'll watch a we'll watch a clip. Of One minute, these. David. I want to. I want to. I have a. Um, I'm having a. I have a thought about that thing that we just watched. Um, I also actually talked about that early on on Twitter, but. Um, there is a funny thing there. They keep pushing this whole issue during that show about uh, polygamy and say, uh, every man is naturally polygamous and every man who will come here will, uh, you know, admit if he's pushed and if he is put to a, to a lie detector uh, that he is polygamous, that he would rather marry multiple wives if the wife allows it. But women are not like that. And so they keep pushing this whole idea and keep telling the women, you know, you, you guys, you are, you know, women, you are all satisfied with one man, but we, we just want uh, all the women available out there. I really, um, I find it so funny. The show is called The Bitter Truth, right? Mm -hmm. I th I think in order to honor the name of the show, what what they should be really doing is to ask the wives directly and say, be honest, please be honest. Do you as a woman also uh, have uh, desires mm. for other men? Mm -hmm. Since this is called the bitter truth show, please go ahead and admit this. There is no blame. Of course, I don't think this should happen because the women will probably end up uh, dead or something like that. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> it would it would be funny if they like asked that if like Ali Da was like so listen you women when you see big strong Mohammed Hijab tear his shirt off in front of the embassy and he's shaking it in front of everybody how be honest now be honest how many of you are proud of that uh, 
<laughs> and like all the all the ladies' hands go up, and it's like their husbands are like, "Oh no, what are we gonna do?" Right? Yeah, but yeah. but the, and and that that's the problem with this. Notice, I mean, they're they're basing a lot of their reasoning on, um, sort of on average, on average, men would tend to want more sexual partners than yeah. women. But th th I mean, there's a spectrum. There are guys who I mean, there are guys who. <laughs> I mean, there's a spectrum. There are people who aren't attracted to anyone. They don't want. They don't want any sort of sexual partner. That that that's one extreme end. But that you you do have guys who want to be committed to one person. You do have women who want to have a bunch of sexual partners. So it's it's very weird to just say we're going to take like the average, you know, the average of all this. Well, well, what about what about the desires of a woman who wants four different men? Uh, you know, rotate on a rotating schedule. What about her desire? Should her husband? No, no, no that's not allowed. Why? Because the women didn't invent the religion. Yeah, yeah. Women exactly. didn't invent your religion. Yeah. This this whole idea that this is uh, men are like this and women are like this that that's a myth. It's an it's an old traditional idea which people uh, told themselves and uh, because because that's how they how they how they drove the, their societies further. But this is a myth. It's not based on any actual. Yeah, yeah like findings. you could you, like you could it, it, it's a parallel. You could say, hey, on average, men are stronger than women, right? On, yeah. on average, men are stronger than women. But there are women who would kick the crap out of a lot of men. There are there are men who are who are weak and frail, and there are women who would kick the crap out of them, and so on. So it, it's it's like. Yeah, it's 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 hey, let, let's let's base our claims about what marriage should be and so on based on a kind of uh, of averaging of things and, and just ignoring the the outliers. And I don't know. Anyway, weird, yeah, weird situation. Yeah, yeah. But this is this is Dawah. This is Dawah. What a religion. All right. We're ready to check out some Muslim sheikhs crying over uh, over what's happening. Keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> always we've, we've got this clip. Uh, we've got these clips of the Muslim sheikhs crying a uh, little recap of the avalanche of apostasy. Then we're going to go through Sajid's Sajid's uh, response to all of this mess that is being made uh, by by his uh, his fellow Da'is. And then we're going to bring it all together, because one thing I want is for everyone to have the big picture in mind. And you're going to have the big picture in mind after uh, after we get through this. Yes. Oh my goodness! <laughs> it's the worst sound in the world. <laughs> oh man! Are, pe are people doing that, AP? Uh, uh, Defecating on the Quran? Um, I don't know. I couldn't imagine our enemies would sink this low. But I mean, I mean, think about it. these are the same guys who are saying, do we need to massacre that? their words? They said, do we need to massacre entire cities of people to stop this? Yeah, I can't believe people can be so shameless to write Muhammad on their penises and to defecate on paper. What should we do? Should we burn the cities down and massacre them all? What should we do? Yeah, I mean, think about this. Their 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 dais are going around. Ah, we're gonna we're gonna have our secret second wives. Ha ha! So you either need to be okay with it, or we'll have our secret second wives. Do you want? Are you? Do you want to be okay with it? And you'll know about the second wives. You want to keep it secret. And you're always in a state of anxiety and paranoia. Ha ha! We'll take your pick, right? And then the other guys, we're going to marry. Yes, it's okay to marry five year olds. Yes, it's okay four year olds. Yes, it's three. I mean, even eleven months if her parents say it's okay. And then people are like, oh my goodness, this is disgusting. And and then so they <laughs> welcome to Pakistan. The, the response is, oh, wow, we'll teach these guys a lesson. We'll write, we'll write Muhammad on our wieners. <laughs> Post that, post that on the internet, and then we'll all, then we'll all like go to the websites and be looking at pictures of each other's wieners with Muhammad written, written there. That's how, that's how we respond. So, anyway, it's interesting. Yeah. But these guys crying their eyeballs out. And, and this is what the what the Pakistani government and intelligence uh, in cybersecurity is is busy with. They're like, hold on, we have just found out about a new website where people are posting photos of the Holy Prophet Muhammad on their penises intercepted now i'm sending you the data keep the secret and they're cracking down on that yeah they're raiding places probably to prevent people from posting from taking photos of, <laughs> of I, their penises with muhammad on it. <laughs> I, i'm telling you if if they made a csi pakistan <laughs> csi pakistan blasphemy division about these guys 
uh, okay, what do we got now? Oh my goodness, look at this site. It's a guy. And uh, of course, you have to blur it out for TV and stuff. But uh, then <laughs> them like jumping on the case and having a go and like scanning rooms with all their advanced equipment and so on to uh, figure out who, who perpetrated this dastardly deed. I would watch that every single week. Yeah. They have a large briefing with all the members of the agency coming together and and speaking about this grave new issue and having a big screen where they show all the <laughs> a, 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 a brief a briefing more like a debriefing. Get what I'm saying? <laughs> Get what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, all right, let's get a little more of this here. <laughs> We're such, an, we're such an unfortunate people. We just want to kill and rape everybody. <laughs> and unthinkable is happening at the heart of Muslim countries. <laughs> Seventh biggest Muslim country, Pakistan. Muslims are walking away from Islam. Muslims are critiquing Islam after they walk away from Islam. <laughs> Shaking the Muslim majority countries. Research has shown that over 100,000 Muslims leave Islam every single year. Our youth are full of doubts. 24% of Muslim youth are leaving Islam. 23% of Muslims, American-born Muslims. 23%, you get the, the varying... And keep in mind, guys, this is, this is several years ago that they were saying 23%, 24%. I think Zakir Naik said 25% of young Muslims leaving Islam. And guys, that's not like... That's not where it's stopped. That it's it's in the process of accelerating, and that's where that's where they were at a few years ago. This is only the beginning. Some are leaving Islam, yet they are still leading their prayers out of fear. What is going to happen to them? What is going to happen to their family? They are pretending to be Muslim while they are not. Yes, unthinkable is happening at the heart of Muslim countries. That is unthinkable so that's um and keep in mind we we know about that stuff from muslims who uh posted these clips of their discussion saying you know hey there are all these muslims they're in they're in muslim schools uh they're leading prayers some of them have memorized the quran and they're leaving islam and what do we what do we do about this yeah we do like this uh this lineup idea that could be a good part of the show where uh okay we've got this picture of you <laughs> we're not sure which one of you this is <laughs> So we're going to need everyone to stand, line up against the wall here. Drop your pants. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good idea. CSI, CSI Blasphemy Squad, get in here. Yeah. yeah. Gonna, I can't believe some... you just listened to that strong Turkish accent. Why are you so racist against Turkish people, man? I'm just being, uh, I just saw Black Angel's comment that said racist comment by AP in 3, 2, 1. That's why I said <laughs> Well, he's here to oblige. All right. So that sort of brings everyone up to date on some of the big recent events we've been discussing. Are we ready to get into uh, into uh, Sajid's video? I always love watching Sajid videos. So, yes, always, every time. Why is there so little hikmah <laughs> in Dawa? All right, let's check out. Hey, look at him trying to be, to be like me. To and welcome all viewers. Today, I'd like to make a public service announcement yeah. to the non-Muslims who may have announcement. been given a false impression of Islam. I actually come from a non-Muslim background. <laughs> Guys, what an introduction. Man. Think about what he's saying. I'm trying to talk to the non-Muslims here who are watching what's going on in our community. Please don't watch. <laughs> Please don't watch what's going on because this is not. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm begging you. you. I'm imagining him just uh, see all the stuff that is happening, the Daniel the Kikachu debate, the Ali Dawa and Mohammed Tajab, and he put with a serious attitude. He's like, then he sits down and goes, guys, please forget, forget everything that you have just seen. Ignore those guys. Please focus on the good things. Those people do not represent us. <laughs> this man. Do, this doesn't that suck? A, the, difficult. And like, I mean, he must, he must know it, right? Like he sees Daniel advertising his upcoming debate with inspiring philosophy. He has to be like, oh my goodness, this what is going to be a horrible. Now? now I have to clean this mess up. I have to clean this up. <laughs> uh, so here's, here's his effort to clean this mess up. Non-Muslim family members. 
I live in America. I'm surrounded by non-Muslims all the time. And I've made it a goal, a priority in my life to call to Islam, to teach people about Islam. And one thing that has unfortunately been the case since before I even became Muslim is that people keep keep letting the cat out of the bag. <laughs> they keep, they keep, one of the things that's happening is people keep telling everyone what Islam really teaches. It's all the stuff we're trying to keep secret, and they just keep blurting it out. <laughs> well, is the fact that Islam, it's constantly being misrepresented. It, by who? By your Dawah guys? <laughs> Yeah. It used to be primarily from what we would call the mainstream media, whether it be uh, the news on television or in, in newspapers. But now, given the direction that society has gone, a lot of it now is on social media. And now from what I've seen nowadays... It's yeah. Now it's the Muslims themselves, unfortunately. Yeah. 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 So so, so here's here's how it goes. Um, yeah, the, the, the media... The media never under... I, I don't know why Muslims complain about the media. I mean, who has... Who has supported and defended Islam more than the media over over the years. I mean, every exactly. single freaking exactly. terrorist attack, we had to be bombarded with Islamic preaching. Ah, did you? But this has nothing to do with Islam, because as everyone knows, if anyone killed a man, it's as if he's killed all mankind. No compulsion in religion. That's what Islam teaches. Anyone want to convert? That's what the media did for, for, for two decades, uh, had their back. What you could say is, uh, critics of Islam started pointing out all these problems and so on. But notice, it's everything, we pointed this out before, everything critics were saying in 2007, 2008, 2009, and we were, be called, we were being called liars for saying, now the, the da'is are openly proclaiming it, saying, yes, that's exactly what Islam teaches. So wait, all the stuff that you said we were lying about 15 years ago, now you're you're shouting from the rooftops. This is This is amazing stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's basically... If they say it, it's okay. If we say the exact same thing, we're lying. What a religion. Yeah, we were lying because it was it was us saying it. Uh, that makes sense. It makes complete sense. All right. Let's a major wow. way How that Muslims and non-Muslims interact is through debates, through online arguments and spectacles. And I think that this has unfortunately led to a misrepresentation to many non-Muslims regarding what Islam is truly about. Now, it can be difficult to make videos such as this because if a Muslim is going to come out and they're going to be critical of certain factions of their own community, then such factions being criticized will call them opportunistic backstabbing agents. But at the same time, if you don't clarify mm -hmm. it, then Islam is misrepresented not only to non-Muslims, but to the, the Muslim audience. He, he's got a, he's, that's an important point. It's a, he's pointing out that he's in a really tough spot. Because it, no matter what he does, he's in trouble. So this is a dilemma. Yeah. Do I respond to these guys or not? If I don't respond to these guys, then these guys are growing more and more popular. They're running around defending child marriage, turning Islam. Now, it, I would assume Sajid knows that this is the religion of child marriage. He just understand you don't want to be the public face of pedophilia and be yeah, defending yeah. your religion. So he understands that it's bad. And therefore, since it's bad for the Muslim community, keep your mouth shut about this stuff. Um, so it's do, if he doesn't speak up, these guys are going to keep making Islam look worse and worse by emphasizing all of the things that, that horrify people about Islam. So if he just lets things go, guess what? Ali Dawa, Muhammad Hijab, Sheikh Uthman, uh, Daniel Hakikachu, these guys are all just getting more and more popular and making Islam look more evil and much stupider uh, than people like Sajid think it is. And so what do you do? Do you respond? If you respond, all their fans attack you and saying, ah, oh, you're just jealous. You're causing division in the Ummah and so on. You're a bad Muslim. And so if you respond, you're bad. And then you have to deal with all this stuff. And if you don't respond, well, what do you do? You just have to sit back and watch as they like destroy destroy your ability to do dawah because you're going to get to the point where you go hey everyone convert to islam they're like what the ch the religion of child marriage get out of here man you yeah, sicko yeah, yeah, right yeah. and uh, he's he's specifically saying that uh, people refer to um him if he speaks out as a, uh, a a backstabbing agent and he's not just making that up on the spot it's uh it's actually um muhammad hijab and al dawah have referred to him as a backstabber because he came out criticizing Al-Dawah's uh, 
behavior and performance when he <laughs> was that the grapes to have a debate with me yeah with the grapes and stuff and uh then he also criticized Mohammed hijab and they called him a backstabber uh and Daniel Hakikic, you recently accused him of being a secret agent for the West to corrupt Islam or something like that because he uh, told him to calm down and stop causing, uh, you know, unrest among Muslims and stuff like that. So uh, he's directly or indirectly responding to these things that are actually happening to him right now. Uh, Good Clan said, uh, hey, David Wood, you are the best all time debaters to Islam. Uh, no, there are, there are debaters who would run circles around me. Uh, you see, I like that part and convert lots of Muslims into Christianity or at least not living in Islam anymore. And of course, AP, I watch your videos, too. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I didn't know yeah. anyone watched the videos. Yeah. I didn't know AP still made videos. Yeah, I, I didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> uh. All right, let's get a little more Asajid here. You notice like. We obviously disagree with Sajid, but he's got he's just way he's got way more common sense then i'm the serious i like to... the guy i yeah. like the guy i actually i actually uh genuinely like this guy i think he has a he's he's trying to be at least honest i also apologize because in the past i uh i, I once accused him of lying because he was uh he responded to me with uh things about the gospel and i thought this is just he must be lying but he was just i you know, he was being desperate or maybe lying to himself but uh i, I don't I, mean, I i think he is he tries to be as honest and as reasonable as possible and he's also against all of these uh these 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 shenanigans that these other muslim apologists are constantly uh engaging in he has a he has an interesting personality and I, I i i like the guy unfortunately he blocked me once i contacted him and asked him if he mm -hmm. if he wants to have a conversation with me and it's uh it's just a it is a it is a horrible position to be in right like like he's got the task of trying to clean up all these messes that these guys are making on a daily basis i mean on the daily basis he's all these da, uh, all these dawa guys are like making islam into a laughing stock and they're doing mm. it for their followers because their fans love it whereas he's looking at it from not from a a dawa fan perspective but how does this look to non-muslims this does not look good it does not look good if we are now the official religion of child marriage Mm -hmm. of of the the official religion of marrying five year olds and four year olds and three year olds and so on. We don't want to we don't want to be that. But all you know, all the Hikikachu fanboys are ah, Alhamdulillah, our great hero. He's defended child marriage, and he's like, oh my goodness, man. It, here's the thing: I want to add one little uh, warning or disclaimer. Um, I do praise Sajid Lidham sometimes for his personality and and all of that, but. Um, this doesn't take anything away from the fact that he is uh, a Salafi traditionalist Islamist who supports the establishing of Islamic uh, states around the world and the application of harsh Islamic laws if there is opportunity. The reason uh, Sajid Lubim is like this and the reason he fights with Daniel Hikikachu, for example, is that he um, is a Salafi, just like Daniel Hikikachu and the others. Salafis are these... Uh, Re, um, revivalist traditionalist Muslims, but he is from a little bit of a different uh, way of thinking, from a different strain where um, they are called quietists or also they are called uh, Madhalis based on a scholar uh, named um, Rubaya Madhali or something like that. Um, who don't, was don't, a don't don't make a up lawyer. names. Don't make up names, man. <laughs> well, his last name was his 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 uh, his name was Madhali, whatever his. Uh, first names are i don't i don't care but uh so that guy was in support of being a loyalist supporter of whatever muslim governments are in existence without publicly criticizing them and uh and daniel kikachu on the other part is a brutal radical who will call out and brutally confront every islamic government that doesn't apply islam properly so they are on two different sides of the traditionalist uh, you know, spectrum, but in the end, they are, they still believe in the same things. Yeah. And that's why, uh, even though you can, you, you can appreciate the position that Sajid is in and you can actually respect him for, you know, being willing to call out his co-religionists. Don't lose sight of the fact that they are ultimately aiming at the same thing. 
Yeah. Um, th- and this isn't true of all Muslims. You could be, you know, you could be from a different sect of Islam that does not believe in the same Hadith sources, and you could get some very different results. You could get pe- you could get people who are like, no, 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 no. That, that, that these guys are these guys are totally wrong about a lot of these things they're saying. You could get Muslims like that. This is why I said, you know, Sajid, at the end of the day, he probably believes that child marriage is OK. He might be one of the guys who says, you know, it was OK back then. But, you know, the world has changed. And since girls go to school now or something like that, he, he, he might he might uh, he might think something like that. So he might think it's actually wrong in this time. But I mean, he is committed to the same sources. So I guarantee you he believes in some really, really creepy stuff that would align with a lot of the horrifying stuff we, we hear about Islam. But so, I mean, you could actually you could actually think of it like this, like. Which would you prefer? Would you prefer the guys who are blurting out all this horrible stuff or the guys who are trying to cover it up? <laughs> like, that's that's so the thing. You could look at it as, you could look at it as, as is he, this is actually worse to cover it up. Yeah, that's why I actually want, I mean, that's why I always want Daniel Kikachu to, to be, uh, to be out there and to speak to people. I mean, the, the guy thinks somehow that I, uh, that I don't like his presence or, you know, that's, uh, I'm trying to hide. I, I don't know. I'm, I, I love it. I, I emphasize Daniel Kikichu. I talk about him. I suggest him to others. I highlight the things that he does just because he puts it right out there in front of everyone's eyes. He shows to everyone what a horrible thing Islam actually is. And that <clears throat> is good because uh, too many people hide it and he doesn't. Yeah. And so it seems like every one of these guys is like a mixed bag. You can point to things yeah. like, oh, my goodness, that's awful. And something good about the person. So it's like, yeah, yeah, Daniel's claims that he's making, same thing with Ali Dawa and Muhammad Hijab. They're they're advocating some horrible, horrible practices, but it's actually good that they're blurting them out because it helps people make an informed decision. Uh, and Sajid, you could actually respect him for, you know, calling out other people for saying horrible things and so on. But, um, you know, can't. It, it doesn't mean that his views are, uh, are, are any better on a lot of these topics. Yeah, he still doesn't have hikmah. He, yeah, he's got more hikmah, but still does still not enough hikmah. So Richie yeah. Torres say, uh, don't let all of this distract you from the fact that Christians are praying that AP, the apostate prophet, is freed from the absurdity and stupidity and idiocy of atheism slash materialism. So you heard Did it. Did you just? Oh, no, I was wondering if you made up that part, but... Uh... Absolutely. Oh, you added to it. Okay. I, 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 yeah, I, I expanded. It's, uh, it's the, the, the D-word-expanded translation. I, I wasn't reading it, and I was, I was sure that you either made that up completely or added to that. Yeah. Uh, so everyone's praying thanks. for AP to escape this low hikma, this low hikma death <laughs> trap of, of atheism. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's get some more Sajid. It really does put us in between a rock and a hard place, as the saying goes. Good description. However, I know many of you watching are intelligent people. Many of you very much appreciate such clarifications. So that being the case, I wanted to just mention a few things. Firstly, I think we can contextualize the entire situation if we keep in mind the fact that nowadays our society just seems to be entertaining ourselves to death. Never in the history of humanity has... It's actually a good point here. It's uh, about a... Uh social media being more entertainment driven and then creators, content creators having to adapt to this. But let, let, yeah, people let have the opportunity to sit there on their smartphones, on the internet, <clears throat> watching movies all day, having access to an endless amount of music and games and, you know, interacting on social media, posting content yourself. I mean, this is unprecedented and it's something that uh, only Allah knows how many of us are addicted to. So because we have become a society obsessed with entertainment, this of course has affected the way that religions such as Islam are presented to the people. And it's Yeah, um So notice the issue there. It's uh back in the day, back in the day. Let, like let's suppose you went to see William Lane Craig back in the day. Yeah. Like but like before the the rise of the internet. So let's suppose this is like 80s or 90s. If you were going to go see William Lane Craig speak, you would go to like a, a college campus where he's speaking or a church or something like that. He's speaking. You go in there, you're you sit down. You're at this, let's say, hour long lecture or something like that. You're kind of committed already. There's nothing else to once you sat once you sat down. You can get up and leave, but other than that, you're you're basically you're you're kind of committed. You're kind of locked into your position. Now, when everyone carries around devices, uh you you have to keep people entertained or they'll just they can you you're literally a click a, a cl- they're they're literally a click away from watching something else, right? 
Uh, so now, now you would watch, you would, you don't need to go somewhere to watch, let's say William Lane Craig or something like that. Now you just, if you want to watch something, you click on it on social media. And if you lose people's attention for five seconds, there's all this other stuff right on the side to click on that's saying, Hey, come click here, come click here. And what that, what that means is instead of just presenting information, you have to also be entertaining people because otherwise they'll, they'll click on something that's also entertaining in addition to being informative. And what this means is that everyone, content creators have to be uh, shaping their content with these things in mind to be entertaining as well. But notice, what do people click on? If you're talking about child marriage and so on, and hey, we're having the big child marriage debate, or hey, we're talking about secret second what? Well, who's not going to click on that? And so it's actually fa it's actually encouraging these guys to talk about all of these things because that's getting them the clicks. And they're not clicking on just, hey, here's my defense of Tawheed or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But so um, people would rather click on that. But here's the thing. I want to give Sajid an idea of something that he could. If I was in his place, like for example, he puts a, a headline, a title named uh, How to Have More Hikmah. And people don't care. People don't click, click on it. They would rather click on uh, Is it okay to have secret second wives? Everybody wants to know more about this because people are you know, uh, dying to have a second wife. So he could come up with new ideas. He could adopt uh, people that stuff that people like from pop culture. Uh, and he could, for example, turn the Hikma title into something like Hikma Baby One More Time, you know, <laughs> or <laughs> that, was, that was terrible. I know, that was so the worst many, thing I've ever heard in my entire life. That, that was the worst joke I've ever heard. I was laughing life. just uh, because you had, <laughs> I, I was laughing just because you had the nerve to say something that dumb. I know, I know. I'm just, I'm just realizing how horrible that was. And I want to, I don't know, I want to end my uh, stream, not my life. Uh, but yeah, no, he could make it more entertaining. Maybe it could just like uh, Alidawa, he could make clickbait videos to uh, to reach more people, and then he could give up more of his uh, dedication to truth and reason, and thereby, you know, appeal to more people who would rather watch Alidawa. You know, mm -hmm. he should be doing this. And that is an issue. Look, uh, Damon here yeah. said uh, this guy's on social media making a video about how bad social media is. Yeah. But it, it's like. I mean, he is on social media, but he's not doing the he's not at least here. He's not he's not doing the entertainment driven idea. He's still he's sticking to his guns as far as I'm just going to talk to people and be reasonable. The problem is that that's not working. Right. The people who are doing it differently are the ones who are exploding in popularity. And so that's that's the real difficulty that he's in is everyone who's do everyone who's doing it the Ali Dawa way is going to become more and more popular. Everyone who's doing it the Sajid way is going to become uh, insignificant. And yeah. so if you're, a, if you're the next, if you're a, uh, let's say 17, 18 year old Muslim, and you're deciding you want to go the social media route, what do you, which route, which route are you going to go? You're going to, you're going to copy Ali Dawa, right? Yeah. You're going to copy yeah. Muhammad hijab. You're going to thump your chest. And so that's what Sajid sees. This is only going to get worse because yeah. these guys are like the models for the way things are going to become. And it's only going to increase. And there must be a, a pretty horrible feeling of helplessness. But what were you cracking up about? Because you obviously want to talk about it. No, I just saw that comment from uh, Jack Abok, which said, unsubscribe because of that joke. <laughs> <laughs> AP, AP, is, AP is losing me subscribers. Uh, yeah. Okay, so uh, Dan here says, uh, oh, now this is becoming the uh, Repent AP show. Uh, Dan Strait says, God bless you, David, praying for you and your family. Oh, yeah, that AP guy, too. Come to Christ, AP. Quit being an atheist dirtbag. Refuting atheism is easier than refuting Islam because atheism is much dumber, according to Dan Strait here. So you heard it here, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Always have to read to check if it actually says that. <laughs> uh, all right, so more from Sajid here. To the extent that sometimes the truth and what's right What's actually beneficial will be sacrificed for the sake of entertainment. And we will let our desires get the best of us because we want to be entertained. We want to watch this and at the same time fool ourselves into thinking that it's beneficial or that we are walking in the footsteps of the righteous Muslims. So in Change. the name of fighting for Islam, we find people having the most absurd, ridiculous debates. But such yeah. debates garner the most people.
because it's seen as entertaining and you're also tapping into not only your Muslim audience who are going to cheer you on, but you're also tapping into the non-Muslim audience and those who may be cheering against you. But for everyone watching, I would like to clearly state that Islam is not about intellectually owning opponents in debates and arguments. What? Okay. It's not? Yeah. Yeah, now now yeah, now he's on to a he's on to a related topic of like you do have it's this trend for a long time of you're humiliated, we've humiliated you, and so on. And that's like what but notice that that's another example of just what's popular. If you post a clip of you owning someone and hey, AP destroyed with these grapes and so on, then <laughs> The people click on that. So it is It is this weird changing world where you have to be, one, you have to be talking about really weird stuff. You have to be talking about really sensitive issues. Uh, you have to be uh, entertaining people the entire time. And that's what's going to, and you have to be like owning and humiliating everyone. And that's what's going to make you popular. And if you're just a calm, reasonable person trying to present your views, yeah, you're not acting like an idiot, but the the other guys are the ones who are who are who are growing rapidly in, in their in their impact and so gosh this is a this is a rough spot to be in keep keep in mind everyone i mean he, he's he's talking about from an islamic perspective right now everyone's got to deal with this everyone atheists uh christians hindus everyone's got to deal with the same issue namely as we're adapting to social media uh people's attention span decreases their inclination to click away from things very quickly, that increases. So their ability to be uh, sidetracked and, and distracted very easily, that increases. And therefore, in order to hold people's attention, you have to be dialing up things like theatrics and entertainment and so on. You have to do that. And so it means that there's like this arms race of who's going to be talking about the most disturbing things in the most hilarious way possible. Yeah. And it's just... We live in a society. Yeah. Yep, and AP loves this because that's basically all he does is entertain people with no content. Yeah, <laughs> with that's, no, that's with, what I did. With no actual content. All right, Yeah. let's see where he's going. Yeah. Slam is not about being as contrarian and unlikable as humanly possible. In the see, this, is, it, this is a clear reference to Daniel Kikuchu. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, uh, and, and notice, it, he he does he does seem to zero in on the on the important points but whenever you have whenever you have these sort of group dynamics where it's one group versus another group you can see you can see this in politics you you can have two political parties who try to work together but if they get to a point where they really really hate each other then the people within each let's say political party could be any groups that are set against each other religious groups whatever but uh you have two political parties and they come to view each other as as enemies and not people who are all sharing the same society and should be working together then once your group has set set it set the other group as their supreme enemy people will literally be, be i mean they will be climbing over each other to become more extreme against the other group to be more contrarian as he put it and so you will tend to elect people who are owning the other side more and whoever is most revolting to the other side, that becomes your guy. And so he's pointing out that this is true even here. If, you, if you're a Muslim and you feel like your religion is being attacked by people like AP and things like that, and ah, our religion is under attack, you tend to rally around a champion. Who are you going to rally around? The guy who is, who is most contrary to what the critics are, are, are saying and doing. Exactly. And so you, you'll just rally around these guys and the, 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 the calmer voices, what, what do we need him? We need, we need a champion who's going to own these guys. That's who we need. And so he, he sees all this. He sees what's going on here. And, and the thing is, Islam is the ultimate, uh, you know, um, warlike ideology that has this whole idea of, of defeating and fighting for Allah and all of that stuff. So Islam is definitely very quick to adopt this ideology and to, you know, elevate it as much as possible. Did you check the comment? AP has a secret second religion. <laughs> secret religion. <laughs> yeah. People are funny, man. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. Being so. courageously unapologetic. But Islam is balanced. It's also not about acting like we all agree on everything. Nor is it about sacrificing the truth in hopes that everyone likes you. What Islam is about is la ilaha illallah, which means there's nothing worthy of worship Except Preach, Allah. Bro. 
And Allah is a name referring to the Creator, the one who created all of us, the one who is the all knowing, all hearing. Yeah, he, he's kind of he's kind of losing me with this. I don't mean losing my attention. I mean, uh, come on, dude. It's yeah. like he's going he's going back to this standard dawah pitch of, uh, hey, you know, Islam is just belief in one God and submission to one God. You believe in one God, don't you? So submit to one God. That's all Islam is. No, it's not. It's a especially if you're talking about Salafi Islam. It's a it's a pretty big package deal, right? It's it's yeah. that and a ton of other stuff. And people like Sajid, they don't want people knowing about the ton of other stuff until they've been conditioned to be ready for it. They understand, hey, if you just expose people to all this extra stuff as part of this package deal, they're going to be horrified at it. And therefore, yeah. you need to keep you need to just emphasize, hey, just one God, just one God, Tawheed, Tawheed, Tawheed. You got to emphasize that. Get them into Islam and then slowly work them into it. You don't run around shouting it that that, hey, this is the religion of child marriage and stuff like that. You don't you don't want to you don't want to do that. I also did this thing um, when I first had my first interaction with this guy, I asked him uh, since he seems to uh, hide all those, you know, jurisprudential things to the background or, you know, keeps keeps them for later. I asked and said, um, what should happen to me and as a Muslim under your ideal, you know, Islamic Islamic system in your Islamic world and he didn't respond to it he re basically responded to it by uh well this is this is not something that we should be uh talking about anyway because this would be up to the you know to the to the rulers and the you know the scholars of jurisprudence and and all of that so <laughs> what he does here is he clearly knows what I'm talking about uh but he uh Unlike Muhammad Hijab and Al Dawa and Dan Kikiju and all of these other uh, idiots, he doesn't want to directly say what he actually thinks. He wants to uh, keep it quiet, leave the hidden, disturbing, barbaric part to another time, while right now just preaching nicely to all the others, except you, who is going to be, you know, executed later. Yeah. yeah. yeah so, uh, I mean. He he's right though, right? Like it, it, it would it would it would be wiser to keep your mouth shut about all that stuff yeah. and not tell people yeah. about it, right? Like yeah. in other words, if 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 the Dawa guys could all be on the same page, it should be, hey guys, let's all let's keep all this stuff a secret until later. Let's just let's just focus on you know on on uh, on oneness and converting people to Islam and stuff. Let's focus on that. Introduce the stuff later. Um. And so, yeah, from I mean, from his perspective, it's like you guys are ruining everything by bringing this out into the open when that's the stuff we're supposed to keep secret until until later. Yeah. You idiots. What's wrong with you? You know what? the <laughs> You know what the problem is? We've got all these. These LHDs going around low Hikma Dawagandists. <laughs> <laughs> he should use that term. He should call these guys LHDs, low hikma dawagandas. And the goal of people should be to be HHDs, high hikma, high hikma dawagandas. <laughs> you call them double HDs. The goal should be to be double HDs, the, the high hikma da dawagandists. That's what you want to or, be. Or it could be a spin on uh, on Andrew Tate's high value man and low value man, where it's like high, high hikma man and low hikma man. Hey, you yeah. know it's funny because uh, I was mentioning that I thought I think it's clear. I'd have to put the put the actual clips together, but I thought it was clear that Ali Dawa and Muhammad Hijab and so on—they're getting this from Andrew Tate, not not the idea. I mean, the idea of, of secret second wives and so on—that's that, that's in their beliefs. But the idea that you could just sit women down and tell them, "Hey, if you want a high value man like me, you got to look the other way when I cheat." Right. He was doing that just from the perspective of clubbing. Hey, if I'm paying all the bills and you get to live in my giant my giant ha house and ride around in my Bugatti, then keep your mouth shut if I'm cheating on you or I'll replace you with someone who doesn't care and is fine with it and is happy riding the Bugatti and doesn't care if I'm cheating on the side. Right. And so and the, the, so these guys are doing the exact same thing. But it's very interesting because uh, uh, Tate in that context was saying, hey, if you want a if you want a high value man. And then in in the uh, in that Ali Dawa video, um, Muhammad Hijab refers to. Hey, so you, you, want, you want to talk about losers here? We got a high value man, but he's 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 talking about it in the same way. A high value man. You've got a. But in, from their perspective, it's high value Muslim. Look, we're we're out doing the Dawa. We deserve our our extra women, and you should be fine with it. <laughs> 
these people are such this is such, wild stuff man uh, smooth brain these are oh my these are fun times to be in all right let's wow. see what he's got here the one that has the most perfect attributes he is completely unique and he is one and what we try to do as muslims is submit to and follow the guidance the revelation that he sent us all right you got a problem <laughs> Surah 4, verse 65, we went through this a million times. Our yeah. job is to submit to him. But Allah says, Surah 4, verse 65, you can only submit to him by obeying everything Muhammad decides. Yeah. And that's when you go to the Hadith. And that's when you get the stuff about child marriage and all this other stuff. Secret, secret, okay, secret, but... second. Yeah, that's the other part. Surah 33, verse 21 says, Muhammad is your pattern of conduct. Guess what? Muhammad was messing around with his slave girl, Mary the cop, in his wife Hafsa's bed, trying to keep it a secret. Then he wants Hafsa to cover it up. Then she doesn't. Then he swears an oath that he won't do it anymore. Then he breaks that oath and says, Allah told him to break the oath. He gets revelations in the Quran about this. That's your pattern of conduct. So, sorry. So, 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 sorry. And now so, you're just proving that Muhammad was a high value man. Super high value. It was based. Yeah. Hey, we should make a movie about Muhammad where he's like, bra he's like Andrew Tate. You know what I mean? Like, just bragging about how super <laughs> high value he is. He's like the most high yeah. value dude of all time. Yeah, and instead of having a Bugatti, he has a a, a Barak, the the horse. He's know? got a he's got a Camelac. <laughs> <laughs> what, hey, what color is your camel? Yeah. What color is your Camelac? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and a very important aspect of that guidance is having the best character. As Muslims interacting with non-Muslims in the name of da'wah, in the name of calling da people to Islam and da teaching them about Islam, it's incumbent upon us to represent this religion through having the best of character. And we should relay the reality of what Islam... Uh, best of character according to Westerners or best of character according to uh, Muhammad, your pattern of conduct? Because living up to that pattern is uh, pretty different <laughs> than... Mohammed. Mohammed, by his standards, by Mohammed's standards, best, best of character. <coughs> is about. It always has to come back to worshiping Allah alone, trying to learn about who Allah is, keeping in mind our purpose in life and the fact that Allah is going to resurrect us and we are going to be held accountable before him in the hereafter. Understanding that he sent prophets throughout time and the last prophet he sent was the prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And that the Muhammad. Quran is the final revelation that he sent to us and preserved for us. That have you noticed we're sitting here letting him do dawah on our on our channel? I wonder if anyone's like converting mm -hmm. in there. Oh my goodness, I didn't know all this. Let me convert. I'm pretty sure a few people here have already converted by now. Right? Yeah, they're like, yeah. they're like, yeah, we heard all that stuff about uh, the avalanche of apostasy and about the child marriage and about uh, about the secret second wives. We're all horrified, but now he's saying, hey, it's oneness and we got to submit to God. And so, yeah, let's convert. You see, this is how Allah humiliates them. They are now making free dawah. Allah is making them do dawah because they're enemies of Islam. <laughs> hey, do you, do you remember we posted a video and then like they ran like an yeah. Islamic ad and they were taken as like a miraculous sign? You see? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm, this is not, I'm not making this up. Ali Dawah actually did this. He, uh, because of an, an Islamic ad on, on one of our videos, he, uh, because of the, oh yeah, those videos that we made together, those three videos about uh, people joining Islam, watch this before you join Islam or something like that. And there we had Islamic uh, ads playing before the videos and he made a response and he was like, this is a miracle. This is a sign from Allah. You see? So he humiliates them. He shows them. Yeah, <laughs> it's not it's not the algorithm saying, hey, lots of Muslims are watch people who are interested in Islamic topics watch these videos. Therefore, let's give him related ads. It's not that it's a it's a miracle. Of Allah well, exposing algorithm us. Allah basically the same thing. Allahgorithm. The Allahgorithm. Yeah. Allahgorithm. The Allahgorithm. Here we go. He may be guided by the Allahu Akbar Gorithm. <laughs> These are the types of things that we Muslims should be inviting to and teaching. And once the true message of Islam has been conveyed, it's up to you to accept it or reject it. If you reject it, then we then call we say, then we for slaughter you, you in the name of your religion. And for us is our religion. We have not been sent. To argue. Yeah, that's what you do. Yeah. yeah, that's what you do when you don't control the population. Yeah, right. Yeah. We all we all know, Sajid, what happens when you control the population? Then that message yeah. changes. We all know what with you all did. Yeah. We yeah. all know what Muhammad did. What the what the caliphs after him did. We all know this, man. Yeah, when you are when you are a a small minority of the population and you invite someone to Islam and they say no thanks, then that yeah, then you say to you be your religion and to me be my religion. In an Islamic state, 
can ask Ali Dawa what happens because we already know. Yeah. yeah. Um, hey, look at this. Klaatu! Klaatu! Barada! Nikto! You don't even know what that's from, do you, AP? I have no idea what that is. No. Well, that's because... I'm ignorant. You're too young. What is that from? That was from... Uh, it was definitely an army of uh, army of darkness. <laughs> he had to go. He had to go get this book, the Necronomicon. That's what. Uh, that's why I held up Sahih Muslim. He had to go get this book, the Necronomicon, and they told him he had to say these words before he picks it up, or it w he would unrelease. He, he would release the army of the dead. Oh. And then he goes. He, he couldn't remember the words. So he goes. Klatu Verata Nixo. <laughs> there, I said the words, and it re releases the army of darkness. And then he's like, "Okay, I didn't say every little syllable, but." I don't know why someone's putting that there, but uh, I've always I've always wanted to do a video where I'm opening the Quran. Matter of fact, I had made a video where I said that while opening the Quran, but uh, it'd be cool to have a Quran that looks like the Necronomicon. Yeah. Every day. But unfortunately, for quite some time now, this is what we find. And we find even amongst ourselves, Muslims debating each other for the sake of entertainment. That's Men true. Men and women sitting together, yeah. casually discussing topics oh. that are really not a priority. Oh, wait a minute. I did, to the vast, vast I didn't, what's that? I watched this video. And I didn't even catch this part for some reason. I think I was I was busy with other stuff. I didn't even hear this part. I, yeah, here I he's clearly he's clearly talking about that video. That yeah, yeah, yeah. I wasn't aware of this. That's, yeah, so so he's cool. clearly talking about two things here, maybe more, but he's definitely talking about Daniel Hikikachu and the Ali Dawa Muhammad Hijab discussion with the uh, Muslim ladies about se secret second wives. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Majority of Muslims, if not all of the Muslims, watching these conversations play out. So to summarize and conclude this video, I would firstly encourage anyone who is sincerely looking for truth to ask the creator to guide you. Because at the end of the day, nothing I say, nothing that anyone says in a debate, in a video, in an argument is ultimately going to guide you. It's the creator who's going to guide you. And I'd also say, just keep in mind that these entertainers online are just that. They're entertainers. They're not the type of people who are necessarily really going to tell you uh, about what Islam actually is. They're not... I, I mean Keep in mind, I mean, you know, beautiful. he's being he's being pretty brutal there. He's saying that Daniel Hikikachu, Muhammad Hijab, Ali Dawat, these guys are just entertainers. He's saying these yeah. aren't these aren't these aren't the guys who are going to lead people to the truth. These are entertainers. These are internet. I actually heard somebody else say that same thing uh, before in a video response to Ali Dawat. There, there, there is this guy, this um, kind of uh, extremist uh, <clears throat> preacher type who is on YouTube, who doesn't have as many viewers, but he made a response to Ali Dawad. Somebody asked him about Ali Dawah, and he said something like, uh, Ali Dawah, I mean, claims to make Dawah videos, but you know, is it really, is it really Dawah? His videos consist of uh, reacting to things, doing shenanigans, laughing. Clickbait, clickbaity stuff. Like stuff yeah. Yeah. yeah it, it, just stuff that appeals to to people who want to be entertained, he doesn't. He's not doing dawah. This is not dawah. He was saying you know, it was pretty harsh, <laughs> and Sajid is basically saying the same thing in a much nicer way. <laughs> yeah, wow. Necessarily proper representations of what a Muslim should be, and for anyone who has had the message of Islam conveyed to you and you understand it and you reject it, you don't want to follow it, you don't want to believe in it, then it's not beneficial for us to go back and forth and back and forth and argue and debate. And I would encourage my Muslim brother. Yes, it is. I mean, if, if a person has set his mind, it may not be beneficial for, for that person. But there are people who are watching. When will be there, watching? There are people who are watching the discussion, uh, Sajid. That's why you have the debates. Yeah. Sisters, to also internalize that and to not fall into what we've seen become a sport, an entertaining spectacle of argumentation, which is not from our religion. For those of you who are really interested in learning about Islam, inshallah, I'm going to start releasing videos where I'm explaining from the ground up Learn what, from Islam me. Teaches, yeah. what Islam is, who the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was. So please subscribe and check back for such videos if you're interested. Allah knows best. That, Thank that, you for watching. Jazakumahu khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. That's funny. Uh, don't don't learn from those idiots. They are entertainers. Learn from me, guys. I'm going to publish videos soon. <laughs> yeah, but but notice, I mean, it, it, he's 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 already doomed, right? It's so you're just going to make your videos not not being entertaining, not going on these uh, uh, the not owning not owning people, humiliating people, uh, not not dealing with these these super sensitive topics that could be an embarrassment not touching on any of those it's like 
you're you're basically saying I'm going to I'm going to become less and less significant over time and all these other guys are going to to blow up in popularity more and Marshall. more until and, and I mean think about this I mean Ali, this is Ali Dawa when he's he's just got a million subscribers and he's doing this oh we want secret second wives blah 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 blah, blah right and he's already saying it. What, what do you do when that guy's got 2 million 3 million 5 million 10 million what do you do when he's the most popular muslim in in history this is going to be i mean this is going to be awesome what do you do then what do you do then do you keep complaining on do you keep complaining on youtube he, he's just an entertainer okay he's got 50 million followers at some point in the future what what do you what do you do about that I don't see. That, I don't, I don't see. Here. I don't see. There's a. I don't. I don't see a way out for these guys. Yeah, you're. You're right on that. That's he actually. That's the. That's the whole problem. He. He points out that. Um, accurately points out that those people are just entertainers and they're not actually. Um, you know, uh, doing the constructive right thing, but they are getting all the viewers because they are appealing to the population. You are not, and apparently the whole stuff is boring. You know. <laughs> I don't yeah. Know. Yeah. So I. I just wanted to uh, put everything together into context for people who uh what context who cares about context why is context I, i'm saying once you understand what's been going on from you know the perspective of history it's it's hard to figure out where to go from here so so here here it is ladies and gentlemen here's the here's the entire history so muhammad originally came out when he was in mecca and he's preaching hey everyone just believe in one god uh let, let, let's get rid of these uh, stupid idols and stuff like that one god he did not he he was not remarkably successful preaching that mm -hmm. message right there were some people who converted um monotheism was was making an impression in arabia during the time because because of jews and christians and so on and it, it was opening people's mind to considering monotheism as a as a serious possibility and then all of a sudden hey there's an arab prophet claiming to get revelations supporting this stuff. And he's talking about Abraham and Moses and Jesus and everyone. And uh, so he did win some converts, not a ton. It was it was later. It was later after he moved to Medina, formed some alliances. Then the message changed to, um, hey, if you join me and you go out and fight for me in battle, then there are two possibilities. Either you uh, survive the battle, either you, either we win the battle and you go home with rewards and war booty and taking these captives home to your tent, or you die in the battle, and then you go to paradise and you spend eternity deflowering virgins. That's when Islam blew up, right? That's when you start getting these, these, these piles, mountains and mountains and mountains of converts. But notice, notice, ladies and gentlemen, notice, because this is, this is what Sajid can't get his mind around. Muhammad preaching oneness, Muhammad preaching tawheed, was not very popular. Muhammad preaching, let's go out and get all these get all all these women as our war booty, take everyone's stuff and then spend eternity deflowering virgins, which seems to be more in line with the version of Islam being spread by Daniel Hakikachu and Muhammad Hijab and Ali Dawa and so on. That's what was extremely popular. In other words, once Muhammad became more of a uh wish granting, desire satisfying entertainer, that's when he exploded in popularity. So yeah. that's sort of so that that's built into it from from very early on. So then you had then you have centuries of Islam uh, expanding through subjugating. Right. So it expands. It expands out of Arabia. It goes across northern Africa, up into Europe. It goes it goes east all the way out to, uh, you know, India and so on. So Islam keeps expanding. And the the, the way Islam was growing back then was about conquest. Eventually, they get stopped. Eventually, get they get stopped in India. Eventually, they get stopped in Europe, and so on. And it all that that entire approach falls apart when the Ottoman Empire uh, loses, right? Because up until up until then, hey, we've always had our empire, which is uh, always in competition with other world empires, but we can hold our own. Now, all of a sudden. It was, oops, now our empire got crushed. Wait a minute, everyone around us is way more powerful because everyone else around us has modernized. And mm -hmm. so this, after after the collapse of the Ottoman Empire, so you're talking about, you're talking about World War I here, after the, 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 after the collapse of the Ottoman Empire, you saw Muslim nations trying to modernize. That's why if you look at pictures of Iran and Afghanistan and so on from the 1960s, it looks very modern. 
It looks more, it looks far more modern than it does now because people are realizing, wait a minute, these guys are all way more, uh, way more powerful than us. This is not the way things are supposed to be in Islam. We, in order, we need, we need to, to go that route. We need to modernize and so on. But notice there is another possible interpretation. So you could say, hey, the reason all these people are more powerful than us is they've modernized and we haven't. Therefore, we need to modernize. That's one That's one possible explanation. There was another available explanation there. The, the alternative explanation was maybe Allah is testing us or even punishing us for our disobedience. And therefore, yeah. we should not be modernizing. We should be cracking down and enforcing Islamic law uh, much more brutally. And so you notice you get the, the revolution in Iran, right? The, the religious takeover, you get the, the, the increase in popularity of the Muslim brotherhood. You eventually, this continues on down to our time with like ISIS and so on. Now, notice what ISIS is doing. We need to purify the Islamic community. Then Allah will bless us. Then we can compete with all these other guys, but you don't, you don't compete with all these other guys from an Islamic perspective. You don't, you don't become more powerful than these other guys by adapting to the West no, you become more devoutly Islamic, and then Allah will bless you, and then you can, and then you can, uh, you can, uh, you could crush these other guys. So that yeah. became a mentality. Then you get all these, uh, you know, people becoming more and more uh, diehard. Um, but notice, you, you, that's still going to take time, right? It's still going to take time for that to happen. So what happens during that time? You are still trying to win converts, and so you get like the the Zakir Nikes and the uh, the Ahmed D dots before him, and they're all preaching. But what are they preaching? They're preaching lies. Ahmed D. Dot, Zakir Naik, these these uh these uh popular dais, they were preaching anything they could make up to defend Islam because they knew they were speaking in an atmosphere of ignorance. And their own followers don't care, their own followers don't care if they're making up making things up as long as it's winning converts. So they go around spouting complete nonsense. Uh, you know, oh, the Quran, there's only one Quran perfectly preserved right down to the letter. Total nonsense. Oh, there are all these scientific miracles in the Quran. Total nonsense. Everything they're, everything they're preaching is total nonsense. I mean, these are the guys who are saying, oh, if you read the Bible closely, you'll see Jesus didn't die. And there are all these prophecies about Muhammad in there. Yeah, he's right there in Song of Solomon 5.16. It's like completely idiotic, insane stuff. But if you're talking to people who don't know any better, You'll always get a percentage of people who believe you, and so you're winning. You're you're winning converts. So this keeps up for a while. Then, you, you, of course, you get 9/11 and so on, and now people are starting to look into Islam more. But people start looking into the arguments of people like Zakir Naik. All of a sudden, people get open access to Muslim sources. Now anyone can go and and look up Sahih Al Bukhari and Sahih Muslim online and so on, and they start ripping these things to shreds, it completely exposing. All of these arguments and all of the all of these claims that are being made by these people, all, all the arguments that have propped up Islam for the past couple of decades are being exposed as lies. And then you even have Muslims admitting, OK, there are holes in the narrative. Yes, everything we've been told is uh, about the perfect preservation of the Quran. It's actually nonsense and so on. And people are finding that out. And then uh, so what do you do? What do you do now that critics now that critics are catching on? Well, what they tried for a while was we'll just call you an Islamophobe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If Zakir Naik says something that's a complete lie and you show that he's he's a liar who's lying, then we'll call you an Islamophobe. You don't like that. And so that works for a while, calling everyone uh, Islamophobes, uh, threatening people, harassing people into silence. Uh, we'll kill you if you keep saying these things about Muhammad. And then you have the, the modern approaches, uh, which is, you know, find find what makes Islam uh, it's all about finding a way to make Islam popular. And some of them are going in a route where if we could just get a famous person to convert, or if we can get on this famous person's podcast to present Islam to all that person's viewers, maybe we can grow like that. And then of course, uh, hey, if we entertain people, uh, they're always looking for pockets of ignorance. They're, in other words, there, there are still people in the world who don't know about any of this. They're looking for ways to find those people who haven't been uh, inoculated against these these ridiculous dawa arguments, and so all of this is going on, and they're sort of trying to figure out ways to continue doing dawa in an environment where it's just not working anymore because dawa has just been based on deception for so long. And then you've got so you've got the the Ali dawa Muhammad hijab crowd, which is let's just do a bunch of antics and so on shenanigans to to make ourselves popular so that people are listening to us. And then you've got the Sajid route of no. Stop telling people that stuff. It's just embarrassing us. Let's just focusing. Let's just focus on the oneness. 
And guess what? None of it's going to work. None of it's going to work. That's what they're all looking for the solution. What's going to work here? And the, an the answer is, no, you spread for 14 centuries through violence. That's not working because you're weak now. And then you were spreading through deception. That's not working now because now we can all look up your stuff. And so you have, if you, if you don't have a plan B beyond this, you are just in trouble. But just preach, going around preaching uh, Islam, uh, oneness, Tawheed, that's not going to work because everyone's going to be listening to the guys who are way more entertaining. But the guys who are entertaining are all narcissists who will gladly throw their religion under the bus as long as it glorifies them. And so that's not going to help you. And so you are, you, you just as the, you are, as the French say, les screwed. There's no way around it. You're in trouble. You're yeah, in trouble, guys. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So that was my, that was bringing it all together. That is the state of Dawa right now. These guys are in a position. These guys are in a position right now. If you're Sajid or something like that, you're in a position where simultaneously you have to clean up the messes caused by Ahmed Didad and Zakir Naik and all these guys because now their deception is being exposed. So you're stuck with all this mess of what do you do now when people believe in in perfect preservation of the Quran and they see that it's not true? What do you do? How do you hold that together? But simultaneously, the guys who are exploding in popularity are the guys who are completely embarrassing you and saying really, really bad things that make you look really, really bad. What do you yeah. do here? And the answer is, you're in trouble. That's it. You are in trouble. What you do is you take off your shirt in public. You scream. Uh, you do whatever you can to become popular. But uh, are you happy now, David? What do you mean? Happy about what? I didn't, I didn't expect such a long lecture here. I was almost going to leave because I thought... I don't need oh yeah, I, I wanted to put all that together because it. I don't know. I just find it. I just find it interesting when you look at it from the whole 14th century perspective of, and then you see it's the same thing Muhammad went through of. Hey, just preaching Islam doesn't work. I have to yeah. be. I have to be. Guys, come here if you want to satisfy all these uh, desires. Uh, I'm yeah, gonna. Yeah. I'll act. Islam actually amplifies the desires and then only allows an Islamic way of satisfying the desire. And so you keep people in there. And it, of course, it of course it helps if you try to leave and they want to chop your head off. That one, that's the best thing to do, actually. That's the best best thing you could resort to. You know, to Here's a question. For, here's a question for you, AP, before we... And pretty much that's a, that's what I wanted to cover. We got through the Sajid video. But uh, here you have uh, Nathan Clark. He says, real question here. How does one help a Muslim see the issue with the cognitive dissonance involved in the Muslim idea of how one gets to paradise. Um, how does one help a Muslim see the issue with the cognitive dissonance involved in the Muslim idea of how, for some reason I'm not getting this right now. <laughs> Real question to you, how does one help a Muslim see the issue with the cognitive dissonance involved in the Muslim idea of how one gets to paradise? I, w w which cognitive dissonance? Uh, I, I guess when they're saying, okay, this is how you get to paradise in Islam. Okay, but and there are all kinds of problems with it, but you don't, you never see the problems. You know what I mean, yeah, but um, I think okay. that's what he's mean. Like, how do you, how do you, how do you get these guys to see it? Like, what, what they're doing? Like, so for example, just fixating on things that somehow agree with them and ignoring everything that refutes them. Um, I mean, you could just continue trying. I don't know. I was kind of looking for just to see uh, a conflict of ideas that cannot be reconciled with each other uh, and how to make Muslims see that. But this is a very, very, very vague question. Um, yeah. That... And, and it, 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 I mean, it seems like what you just said is, is pretty much the same thing I would say. You just have to, yeah. you have to keep, you have to keep at it. Right. And, and, yeah, yeah. and understand that this can take years. If someone has yeah. been raised for years to believe something and you're saying, no, that's wrong. Just showing, Hey, here's one problem for you. Probably not going to do it. Showing three or four problems that might not do it. You know, it, it, it might, it, you might have to show 20 or 30 problems before it eventually clicks. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you have to destroy them and humiliate them. Uh, you have to question them. You have to and, own them. Yeah. Yeah. And you have to you say need a second. And you Simulation. need a second wife. You yeah. Second, second wife. wife. See? Yeah. Grapes. It's all grapes. <laughs> we think great babe. Uh here oh. we have have you guys heard of the work of Ahmed Al Jalad? He studied pre Islamic rock inscriptions and found that they were completely monotheistic long before Muhammad was born. Nope, not not familiar not, with that. 
Never heard of it. You 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 did have you did have uh, you did have other monotheistic groups like we're we're of course familiar with the Jews and Christians, but uh, even the Sabians, the Sabians, the Sabians recited a version of the Shahada. They were they recited yeah. they recited La ilaha illallah. Muhammad just came on and and tacked on. Oh, and, and Muhammad is his messenger. There were also probably remnants of uh, of different religions which. Um later on went extinct the, the, the thing is right now it looks like uh we can look back and think of certain religions there is this religious group and that I mean, the, the environment wasn't like that in the seventh century and especially not in a place like arabia it was um there were a lot of different people from uh, belonging to different religions different ideas different uh sects and cults of religions and uh some of the religions some dualist or gnostic religions also had um you know, monotheistic ideas at their at their core, and they did believe in in those in those ideas. They did believe that there is only one God who is the good, the light, you know, the good one that you want to go to. Whereas the other one, the other entity that exists, is not really God, or is is, is a God that we don't worship or don't believe in. But that was also considered um, the worship and uh, belief in worship of one God back in the day. So there were lots of different ideas, different beliefs in uh, that time. But that doesn't take away, of course, from the fact that Islam has influence from a lot of inf influence from pre-Islamic paganism, polytheism. It certainly does. Yeah. And I've, I mean, I've described it as it's just like you take everything that was around Muhammad in seventh century Arabia and you roll it all up into a ball, you get Islam. So you take the, you know, you take the monotheism from the, from the various groups that were teaching that you take some of the stories, both heretical and orthodox from the Jews. You take some of the stories, both heretical and orthodox from the Christians. You take uh, uh, a view of the, the, some of the, some of the Persians and so on had this view of, you know, Hori's and paradise and so on. You just, and the, of course the pagan practices, the kissing, the black stone, the walking circles around the Kaaba and so on. You just take all of it, roll it up into a ball, you get Islam. In other words, Islam looks exactly like the sort of a like the sort of religion that would arise in seventh century Arabia. Yeah, Zoroastrianism uh, is very you know the the, the the Iranian religion back then. Uh, Islam probably took a lot of influence from from that as well because Zoroastrianism was actually very um, very influential and impactful at that time. Right now, it doesn't matter anymore because it was basically uh, destroyed by by Islam. But Zoroastrianism probably gave Islam a lot of uh, a lot of ideas, mm -hmm. um, and similarly, um, a religion that was probably not as popular as widespread back then uh, was Manichaeism, which probably also uh, in bits survived among people and led uh, to different ideas, also related to Jesus, for example, because Manichaeans um, also had certain Christian beliefs, but they were not Christians; they were. Uh, a separate dualist religion. What's very interesting, by the way, is there is a group uh, named, um, there is a religion called Mandaism, and those people are thought to be um, the the Sabians or descendants or related to them. It, what, what happened is that when Muslims were conquering in the, in the Middle East, they came across this specific religious group when they were very small in number. And uh, that religious group claimed to be the Sabians in the, in the Quran. And they, and they had, a, had a book which they presented and said, we are people of the book. Please don't uh, you know, annihilate us. So they were allowed to live in Islamic lands. But uh, that is also another religious group that, that existed back then. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, that's what I wanted to cover. Uh, God Logic Apologetics just jumped in and said, what I miss, you missed it all, God Logic. And now you are going to be completely insignificant for the rest of your uh, apologetics <laughs> career because you, you missed this. Hey, God Logic, we should do, uh, you should jump, jump on live with us one day. Uh, I'm sure you've got some stuff too talk yeah. about with your with your interactions all right everyone so that's uh that was to bring everyone up to date on the current state of the dawa wars they are stuck in a really really bad position of having to clean up the messes of the past um which is basically 14 centuries of violence which as people are still um concerned about and then all of the propping islam up through lies that you got from ahmed didat and Zakir Naik, and then the ongoing messes created by the entertainment-driven Dawa community, and then poor people like Sajid, who just want to 
take over the world for Islam, but can't do it because they're constantly being thwarted. That's a situation. And now Muslims around the world, because keep in mind, guys, you do, you, you, you have, you have plenty of Muslims out there who are just living normal lives and people who'd be, you know, great neighbors and so on. Um, they're looking at all of this and it's like, what do we do here? What do we do when these are the guys who are the public faces of our religion? And they're in a pretty, pretty difficult spot. And I, 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 I'm a tactical genius and I, for the life of me, cannot figure out any way out of this for them. Yeah. I want to add two things, actually, that are, that are going on right now, just very briefly to reference them. We will actually talk about one of those issues uh, on my next live stream next weekend. Uh, one of those issues is there is a, a Muslim woman who recently had a debate with Daniel Kikichu and whom Daniel Kikichu attacked very brutally. Uh, her name is Safiya Sabrina or something like that. She just made a, uh, a live stream uh, in which she exposed... She went on uh, on Andrew Tate's website and basically um, pretended to be applying for their PhD pimp course and their own. Yeah, fans. it's called like, it's, it's called it's called the, the like the pimping hose doctorate PhD pimping hose yeah. doctorate. Yeah, pimping yeah. hose degree, something like that. Whatever. It yeah, is. yeah. So she she applied for that and um, waited for a message from them and uh, shows on a on a on a live stream on a video that. Um, that she gets a message from them and uh, the website tells them, uh, the people who work for Andrew Tate tell them that uh, she has to become part of the war room, which is on their website, to, to have access to the whole uh, PhD, so pimping hose, and uh, and the, the OnlyFans package. And she, a Muslim woman who is very outraged by this uh, Islamist attachment to Andrew Tate, is basically exposing there that uh, while Islamists are praising Andrew Tate and while they are saying he's now a brother, you know, so let's forgive his past sins, Andrew Tate is still continuing his uh, business of uh, pimping and having a an online porn business and. Uh, running all of these all of these things and basically calling out all of the muslim apologists that we talk about uh for their for their disgusting hypocritical behavior that's very very interesting and, and it's funny because like these guys are like it's it's they're muslims in general like 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 this woman uh they're in the same position that sajid is in right they're looking oh andrew tate is now the popular face of islam He's, I don't uh, want him. I don't want him to be the popular face of Islam because he's horrible and he has a horrible influence on people. So what do I do? Well, if you complain about it, you get attacked like Sajid when he complains about uh, Ali Dawa and so on. If you complain about it, you get attacked. But if you don't complain about it, what do you do? You just sit back and watch it. Watch it happen. Like this is the only this is the only chance you have to deal with it because these guys are just going to get uh, bigger and bigger. But yeah, this is interesting because, you know, Muslims, aha, look at Andrew Tate. He's the top G. He converted to Islam. And we look at it as like, have you seen the reasons he gave for why he was he liked Islam? It's it's because you know, hey, you, you you still kill people over making fun of it, and uh, you know how to keep women in check, and you'll just slaughter everyone who disagrees with you, and so on. And it's like pretty, it's all the stuff we normally point out as problems for Islam. He looks at that and says, "Wow, that's the religion for me." Yeah. And so we point well, out Christianity is weak. Christians forgive uh, Muslims. They are still they are strong. They kill people who offend their their religion. That's why Islam is good. <laughs> yeah. So we point we point out. Hey, look at look at this guy. Look look at look at the horrible things he does. And they say, Oh, that was in the past. That's before he converted. And she's already exposed that. She's already exposed yeah. that. No, that's still going on. The, the 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 Andrew Tate war room is still training people on how to turn girls, how to seduce girls and women into falling in love with you and then turning them into your webcam uh, prostitutes. Yeah. You, you still get that training. So Andrew Tate is still making his money by that course. And so do not, do not, do not, do not come. Oh, that was all in the past. No, that's still going on. Most devout Muslim Andrew Tate is still training young people how to groom young women and to turn them in into your webcam girls. He's still training people to do that. So don't don't Marshall. tell us this was in the past and that he's he's all he's all cleaned up now. Don't give us that nonsense. What a wonderful Muslim brother. Yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So, yep, we will be uh, back, Lord Willing, on AP's channel and maybe talking about maybe bringing everyone up to date on Andrew Tate. 
So yep, we'll yep, see what yep. happens. Any any and, final any final parting thought for everyone before we go, AP? If you can come up with a with an original thought. We live in a society. No, uh, thanks and stay away from Andrew Tate. And you heard it here, folks. AP is a prophet, so he knows. And stay away from Islam.